Hello, everyone. My name is Jay, and I am your Strive Scan facilitator for the WACAC Virtual College Fair. We are super excited for you all to join us and happy to have you here. So just a few housekeeping items to let you know before we get started. Um, you can, at the very bottom of your screen there, you should be able to use the Q&A button on your screen to type out any questions that you have for our facilitators at any time. Um, they can see and answer your questions. Uh, your camera and microphone are off, so don't worry, no one can see and or hear you. Um, this is just one of many sessions, so everything's going to be recorded, and we do want you to uh, sign up for additional sessions because there's lots of great schools for you to check out as well. Um, like I said, this is being recorded, so in about a week, if you need to find this again because you've missed something or want to check something out, go ahead back to where you have registered at strivescan.com forward slash W-A-C-A-C. Now I'm gonna turn it over to our first presenter here and we're gonna get started. So Milwaukee School of Engineering, I'm gonna stop sharing and you can take it away for us. All right, great. Um, I'm gonna start sharing this presentation. Hi, I'm Nyla. Um, I am an admissions counselor at MSOE. And um, through this presentation, I'm gonna give you an overview of all the things that we have to offer you. Um, so here at the Milwaukee School of Engineering, we offer 15 majors and 13 minors. Those include a variety of course engineering majors. Um, and also we have a business admin major, actuarial science, and a, a really big nursing program as well. Um, each major has a specific course list or track um, available also on the university website to take a look at. Um, to give you an idea of the courses that you could be taking as a student. Um, so a quality that we take pride in, of course, is our four-year graduation guarantee. Through that track that I just talked about, you would be able to see how that's possible. Um, another notable quality, of course, is that all of our courses are taught directly um, by professors, so we don't have any teaching assistance. Having courses taught directly by professors goes um, hand in hand with our smaller class sizes as well. We have a 13 to one student to faculty ratio. Um, that aspect allows for our students to build relationships with their professors and make it more accessible to be able to get all your questions answered, of course, um, while you're in that course. Um, our professors have also had years of experience out in the field. So um, they're not only just a professor in the classroom, but they're also a mentor when it comes to future career paths that you are looking into building networks um, through the industry as well. Um, we have a 96% graduation outcome rate, which includes students getting put directly into, or finding a job directly after graduation or going up and moving on to grad school. Um, another statistic that we also take pride in, of course, is our 65,428 average starting salary. Um, the Milwaukee School of Engineering is in a great location. Um, you could say we are kind of the center of downtown, which is a great place to live, of course, as a student. Um, we are about a block from Water Street, walking distance from um, the Pfizer where the Bucks play, and they have a lot of other concert venues, of course, when COVID's not a thing. Um, and about seven blocks, I believe, from the lakefront. Um, so there's a lot to do if that's some, those are some of the things that interest you. I know as students, you can get a discount as well to some sporting events and whatnot, which is pretty cool. Um, we're also located in the industrial district, which also builds on the numerous network opportunities that you would have opportunity to claim as well. Students can start internships as soon as freshman year and the average pay is about $20 an hour, which is not bad at all. Um, Aside from academics, of course, we have 99 plus student clubs and organizations, along with other students for, or other sports for students to join. We have anything from drone to robotics, of course, and automotive clubs to cycling or Grey's Anatomy clubs. So you'll find something that you'd like for sure. Um, and also if you end up not finding a club, you would you could have the opportunity to create one too, which is not a bad thing to put on a resume as a founder. Um, as for sports, we are home to 20 plus NCAA Division III varsity pro, um, programs. A big feature of our campus that's kind of a hidden gem is our ice rink, which is really cool. 
um, after hockey games, fans are able to get on the ice for open skate. Um, so all students have opportunities to make use of the rink as well. Like I said before, with COVID not being a thing. Um, a huge factor that plays a role in a college decision process, of course, is affordability. 100% of our students receive financial aid to help make MSOE more accessible for all of you. Moving on, here is just a list of the majors that are offered at the Milwaukee School of Engineering. Once again, we have, do have the four-year graduation guarantee. If you feel like MSOE would be a great fit for you, I would encourage you to apply through that link right there. It's a free application. Um, so you're not losing out on anything if you don't, if you apply. Um, I'm going to open up for any questions, of course. So um, if you, and also there's a bunch of links for you guys to follow us on um, other social media to keep updated as well. Thanks. Awesome, thank you so much, Nyla. I really appreciate mm -hmm. that there. Um, beautiful. Well, now we are gonna go ahead and move on to our next presenter here, University of Advanced Technology. Go ahead and take it on away for us. Good evening, everybody. My name is Lori Saba, and I'm an admissions representative with University of Advancing Technology in Arizona. We have less than a thousand students, only about 15 students a class, and we offer all technology degrees. So UAT offers both Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, and Master's degrees. When you graduate from UAT, you'll graduate in two years and eight months because our students attend three semesters a year. And you'll graduate with your, uh, with your bachelor's degree, an internship, and a student innovation project. So you'll have something to show. Under digital arts majors, we offer digital video, digital marketing, advertising art, and web design. Our software engineering degrees we offer are advancing computer science, data science, and artificial intelligence. Gaming, everybody loves gaming, right? Well, we offer game design, virtual reality, game art and animation, and game programming. We do have a couple of business and innovation degrees too, technology studies and business technology. For cybersecurity, our cybersecurity lab was funded in part by the Department of Defense. So the CIA, FBI, and NSA recruit our students for jobs and internships. We offer network engineering, network security, and technology forensics. For creation and simulation majors, we offer robotics and embedded systems, human con computer interaction, and digital maker and fabrication. We are accredited through the Higher Learning Commission, which is recognized by the Department of Education. So how do you get a UAT scholarship? Well, all you have to do is apply. We look at your application for acceptance and scholarships. We have a unique application process. You can apply as a sophomore, junior, or senior in high school. It's free to apply. There is no SAT nor ACT required. We don't have a specific GPA requirement, although our average incoming GPA has been about a 3.1. We've accepted students with lower and higher than that. We have all kinds of clubs like eSports that competes in Overwatch, Fortnite, Rocket League, uh, Super Smash Brothers, League of Legends, Pokemon Trainers Club, Nerf Wars, as well as other clubs too. 
So if you're interested in finding out more about UAT, you can scan this barcode right now or check the chat. I put a link in there for you to uh, click on. Thank you so much for your time and thank you, Jay. Absolutely. Thank you so much for you being here. I appreciate it. We're going to move right along now. Make sure any questions go in that Q&A button for our facilitators here. But we are going to move on to our next presenter, uh, DigiPen Institute of Technology. Go ahead and take it away, Adele. Okay. All right. Hi, my name is Adele Karoom, and I'm here from DigiPen Institute of Technology. I'm just putting my screen up. Okay. Um, so DigiPen was founded in 1988. Our president and founder, Claude Comer, was a co-founder of Nintendo Software Technology, which was a first party developer for Nintendo. Um, so we started as a program to train people for video game development, but we now are a private four-year college with four areas of expertise, which are computer science, digital art and animation, game design and development, music and sound design. Um, we are located in Redmond, Washington. We are 16 miles east of Seattle, so 20 to 40 minute drive depending on the traffic. So it's great because you're in a tech hub, you're close to a lot of industry opportunities, but you're also in more of a residential setting. And so you have a lot of opportunities, um, you know, it's for hiking, outdoor activities, but you also um, can be more focused on your studies in a quieter environment. Um, we are the first school in the world to offer a bachelor's degree in video game programming. We have 10 degree programs, eight undergraduate and two graduate programs, um, but our graduate programs are fairly small. So most of the 1100 students on our campus are undergraduates. Um, our average class size is 20 students. Our graduates are credited on more than 1500 commercial video games. Um, so if you go on our website, there is a page called Alumni Success and you can look at a total, um, a very long list of A to Z of all the companies that people have worked for and also all of the games that people have worked on. Um, we ranked as a top five video game design school by the Princeton Review for the last 10 years. And we received um, more IGF awards, that's the International Game Festival Awards, than any other school in the world. And also our student films have received a lot of awards as well. Um, students work a lot in their third and fourth year on project-based learning for animation projects and also for game projects. Um, these are our degree programs at DigiPen. For computer science, we have a BS in computer science and a BS in computer science and machine learning. For game design and development, we have a BA in game design. So that's a broader, it's more of a design degree. You do take some computer science, but it's less a programming degree and more focused on design. Things like level design, um, play testing, player psychology, all of those different aspects of the game. Um, our BS in computer science and game design is first and foremost a computer science degree. So that program, you take a lot of computer science courses, but also some game design courses as well. Um, for the BS in computer science and real-time interactive simulation, we call that RTIS for short. That's our, our original game development degree. So that is heavier on programming, physics, math, um, pre-calculus is required to go into that program. So you kind of start at the calculus level and work up from there and take, I believe it's seven math courses every, um, seven math courses before you graduate. For our digital art and animation degree, we have a BFA in digital art and animation. You start with one year of traditional art and then you move into 2D and 3D digital art and then into animation from there. And then for music and audio, we have a BA in music and sound design. And that is for people with music experience, either vocal or instrumental. And then we have a BS in computer science and digital audio. And that's primarily a computer science degree, but it's focusing on programming for audio. So if you think about if you're playing a game and there's a car driving through a tunnel and it's different outside the tunnel than in the tunnel, um, it's that kind of training to learn how to program specifically for sound. Um, our academic approach is a combination of academic fundamentals and project-based learning. You apply directly to your degree program from your first year, instead of some schools where you might wait for a while to declare a major. So you go directly into your degree program and it's a pretty heavy course load between 16 and 20 credit hours generally per semester. Um, and there's a focus on fundamentals and really learning your skills, but then quickly getting into application um, for project learning. Um, in your third and fourth year, you work on game teams and animation teams. And um, generally there are seven to 10 people, but sometimes smaller, sometimes larger. And you have a role in each one 
um, generally working as if you were in an industry role so that you graduate with a good portfolio of work. And if you wanna see samples of our student games, um, you can go on our YouTube channel. We have a lot of different game trailers and animation trailers and full length animation. And also on our website, there is um, a page for a showcase of samples of student work. So if you're preparing to apply um, for the BS program, so basically all of the computer science programs with the exception of computer science and game design, pre-calculus is required. Um, and we just like to see a focus on math, science, and problem solving skills. So take physics if you can. Um, for game design, they're looking for a broader foundation for people who really think of themselves as designer. They're designers. There is a portfolio requirement for that where you write essays about um, three different things that you've designed. It doesn't need to be a game. It can be a board game. We tell people it could even be a cookie recipe, but they're looking for your design process. Um, for the BFA program, we have portfolio requirements on our website. It's five prescribed pieces and then five to 10 additional pieces. Um, the most important thing is developing a strong foundation and drawing from observation. So not taking a photo of something and drawing it from that, but more drawing directly from observation. And for music and sound design, um, there is also a portfolio requirement for that, demonstrating proficiency in music um, on your instrument or your voice if you're a singer. Um, and it's best if you have some experience with reading music and performing music. Um, so there is my contact information and um, I'll put, I'll put uh, my email in, in the chat as well. Um, feel free to reach out. We have a bunch of events on Zoom and then also you can set up a, an individual meeting with me or with a current student. Awesome, thank you so much, Adele. I really appreciate that here. We're gonna move on to our next presenter with uh, WPI. Tyler, go ahead and take it away. Perfect, so let me share my screen. Um, so hi everyone, my name's Tyler Gibbs. I'm a senior assistant director of admissions with uh, Worcester Polytechnic Institute located in Worcester, Massachusetts, right in the middle of the state of Massachusetts, about 50 minutes west of the city of Boston. Um, so I do have a, um, an allotted period of time to chat with you all today. So there are a few things that I want to touch on. Uh, first off, you know, WPI, we are a STEM focused institution. We have over, over 50 different degree programs. Uh, this includes 12 engineering programs, computer science, game design, um, business. We have biology, physics, chemistry, pretty much everything under the sun of STEM. We do have, we have about 4,500 undergraduate students and about 2,000 grad level students. So we're right in the middle of a small and a medium sized school. And we do have all the great things like double majors, minors, four and five year programs where you can complete your undergrad and masters in just five years. Uh, but something I wanna to touch on before we dive into the point of my presentation today is we have a 95% freshman to sophomore retention rate. So that means 95% of our first year students return sophomore year um, for the second year at WPI. And that's a number we're really proud of. So hopefully throughout today's presentation, search of WPI, you learn uh, why we have such a high retention rate. So where I actually want to spend the bulk of my time chatting with you all today is about what makes WPI WPI and what makes WPI different from a lot of other institutions. It's this thing called the WPI plan. This was a plan created back in the late 60s by administration and faculty at the time where they wanted to restructure the way they delivered the WPI education. And they broke it up into four key parts. The first is how we do our academic calendar. So most semester-based colleges and universities are semester-based. We have two semesters, each semester about 15 weeks long, and you take four or five classes each semester that meet once or twice a week. At WPI, we actually have four terms. Each term is only seven weeks long. You only take three classes over each term. These are full-length courses taken over a seven-week span. So you'll take Calculus One over our first seven-week term. Um, you'll cover the exact same material as you would your first semester at a, at a semester-based college or university. So it is a faster-paced work environment. Our students are covering the exact same material, so they meet more frequently in class with the professors, traditionally four or five times a week instead of once or twice a week. You can see a breakdown of our schedule here. We creatively named our terms A, B, C, and D, um, and we have nice breaks in between each term. So on the seventh week, our students are doing finals in their three courses. So they deserve a break after that week of finals. So in between A and B term, our students have 10 days off in the middle of October. Between B and C term, students have um, a month off between December and January. Then between C and D term, our students have 10 days off um, in at the beginning of March for spring break. Our academic calendar runs the same length from the last week of August to the first week of May. So that's, it's not any longer or shorter there. 
The second part of this WPI plan is our non-putative grading policy there in the bottom left-hand corner. At WPI, you can receive one of four grades, an A, a B, a C, or something we refer to as an NR or a no record. What a no record is or an NR, it's basically if you're going to get below a C in a course, so a D or an F, instead of receiving a D or F on your transcript, you'll receive an NR. This doesn't show up on your transcript. It doesn't affect your GPA. It's as if you never took the course before, and there are a couple of reasons why we do this. One, to help you with the transition to college, because um, we don't want to punish you if you struggle your first year. But on the flip side, we want students taking academic risks, taking classes that challenge themselves or are outside their comfort zone. Um, and when I mentioned our grades A, B, and C, they're flat grades, no pluses and minuses. And the reason we do that is to cut out of the competitiveness that comes with um, STEM-focused institutions. The third thing there in the bottom right-hand corner is our flexible curriculum. Um, so at WPI, there's no one right way to be an engineer or a scientist. We want to make sure students are taking classes that are going to best prepare them for what they want to do when they graduate um, and simply taking classes that interest them. So um, there's no set list of courses you have to take. You'll have a lot of options to fulfill uh, requirements to graduate from WPI. Now, the fourth component, and this is the component that truly makes WPI WPI, and it's our based learning. At WPI, in almost every single one of your courses, you'll be doing some type of team-based project work. Because uh, we want to make sure you're not only learning the theory behind what you're learning, but also how to put that theory into practice. And there are some large scale projects you do have to complete in order to graduate. Um, here are three of them listed on the screen. The Great Problem Seminar is a project you can complete your freshman year, but that's optional. Um, I just have a brief amount of time to chat about two projects. The first one in the bottom left hand corner, the IQP. Um, this is your interactive qualifying project. Uh, you complete your junior year. This is a social science based project where you're asked to solve a problem from a STEM lens and you traditionally get to work in a team of three to four WPI students. And that's traditionally when students choose to study abroad during their time at WPI. And I'll touch on that in just a minute. In the bottom right hand corner is your MQP, your major qualifying project. This is completed your senior year. You can kind of think of it like your senior capstone. This is completed also in a team of three to four students, all with similar or like majors to your own. Um, and this is basically your way of saying, hey, Look at what I learned uh, during my time at WPI. So back to that IQP junior year project. Like I said, this is when a lot of students choose to study abroad. Students can go abroad for an entire seven week term with their team of WPI students to complete their project in conjunction with a business or an organization um, at one of our 50 different project centers all over the world. Um, so here you can see on the map all the different locations that students can study abroad. And we have over 50 different project centers. And the vast majority of our students will choose um, to study abroad during their time at WPI. It's over 80% of our students. We make it incredibly easy for students to study abroad. I know some STEM institutions, it can be difficult to do that and still graduate in four years, but WPI builds the abroad experience directly into um, your four-year curriculum. Um, and a cool thing that our president started two years ago is every WPI student will be awarded a global scholarship to help alleviate the costs of studying abroad. Um, so you can learn more about that on our website. But that's WPI. Definitely check us out. Like I said, I'm Tyler Gibbs. You can find me on the website, only redhead on staff. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tyler. I really appreciate you being here. We're going to move on to University of Alabama to go ahead and take us over with our next presentation. Good evening, everybody. My name is Derek Fossey with the University of Alabama. I'm actually based out west. I'm one of about 50 regionally based recruiters that we have based around the U.S. Hopefully you'll see why um, we kind of structure our staff that way in just a little bit. The University of Alabama is located, obviously, in Alabama. We are in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, right on the border of the Black Warrior River. Tuscaloosa actually means Black Warrior in the Creek and Muscogee languages, um, and that's the land that we occupy, their traditional territory in central Alabama. We're about 45 minutes from Birmingham. That's the airport that most students are going to be flying into if they're coming from so far out of state. Other great destinations are Atlanta as well as Nashville or New Orleans. Those have pretty direct flights from almost anywhere out west as well. As you can see, we do get quite a few students on our campus. We've got nearly 38,000 total students 
students from all 50 states. And unique to us, there's only a handful of schools in this category. More of our students are from out of state than in state, 59% total. And this incoming freshman class of the fall of 2021 is sitting at about 75% out of state applicants so far. As you can see, it's not just the Southeast, California, Texas, Illinois, New York are all in our top 10. Um, in fact, we get more students from Nevada, Arizona, and Utah than we do from some states in the mid South, like Mississippi and Kentucky. And so quite a few students coming from out of state, wherever you're from, you're never alone. On our campus, we do have about 70 different degree programs within our nine academic colleges. That makes up about 200 programs of study once you take into account some of our concentrations, some of our emphasis programs, as well as some of our minors that we have throughout our academic structure. There's just a brief snapshot of some of the programs that we offer. We don't list too many concentrations here because then it would take up quite a bit more than just this page. Coming from out west, our most popular programs are typically from our College of Business and our College of Engineering. With our College of Nursing taking a, a third as of late, the National League of Nurses has recently put us in the top 16 programs in the United States with a 100% job placement rating coming directly from our program into the field of nursing. So for us, it is not just that on-campus learning experience, it's also that hands-on experience that prepares students for their time in a career field. Within this, we also have seven different honors programs. We'll get a little bit more to our honors college in a few extra slides. We are well known for our campus involvement. Over 650 student organizations on campus and growing each semester. We probably add about 50 organizations because if you can't find it, you can create it. And that makes it very easy to get involved on our campus. We do have Greek life on our campus for students that might be interested in fraternities and sororities. We do the largest Greek system in the United States in terms of student enrollment. And with all of our student organizations, each student on average participates in about two student organizations. And that might be Greek life and an academic club that might be intramural sports and campus ministries. That might be something within our honors college and Greek life. Students aren't bound by anything but the amount of time they feel they have to participate. If you are a junior right now, our application will open a little bit later this year. We will have our own application as well as be on the Common App. We are test optional right now and we plan to extend that policy. So if you haven't taken an ACT or an SAT, or if you have and you just don't feel that it's that strong, there's no pressure right now to submit that. We don't require any essays or recommendation letters, although if you do have them, we do have a scholarship application where I encourage students to um, start looking into what is required to submit there as well. We are rolling admissions, so we do make decisions pretty much as as we get that complete application. Even though our averages on campus tend to be about a 3.8 and a 28 uh, ACT, we are typically admitting students well below that. We are really into making sure that students that want to be at the University of Alabama get those opportunities. One of the reasons we do excel in attracting so many out-of-state students is typically our scholarships. This is just page one of the scholarships we offer. And as you can see, they go from 6,000 all the way up to 28,000 per year. That top scholarship value is nearly the entire cost of tuition for an out-of-state student. So quite a few of our students on campus are going to school for only a few thousand dollars per year. I mentioned we are test optional. So these scholarships that we have, still 6,000 to 28,000, don't take into account that ACT or SAT score as they make that decision. You can still qualify for some big money as you go forward. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that we do have sports on our campus. I actually do have to update that National Football Championship um, number we do have 18 championships on our campus for our football team right now students 
best of all, get into a lot of these games for no cost, except for football ends up being about $10 per game. Students are able to see softball, baseball, gymnastics, basketball, just by showing off their student ID. If you do have more questions about the University of Alabama, feel free to reach out. We're pretty easy to find if you Google us and my email address is right there. Awesome, thank you so much, Derek. Really great for that. We are gonna move on to our last and final presenter with Texas Tech University. April, go ahead and take us away. April, your phone might be muted. You know what, April, we cannot hear you. Is your phone, physical phone mute? There we go. Can you all hear me now? Oh, perfect. So sorry. So sorry, you all. So hi, everyone. My name's April, coming to you live from San Diego, California. I'm actually regional. My territory is the whole state of California, Arizona, and Hawaii. Um, so just to let you know, if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to me. Happy to help you out along this process. Uh, to move forward to learn a little bit more about Texas Tech University, uh, we're actually located in Lubbock, Texas, six hours away from Dallas, eight hours away from Houston. Uh, with that being said, yes, we do have an international airport, which is 10 miles away from our campus. Um, definitely our campus is definitely a college town. We wear nothing but red and black. We have lots of school spirit at Texas Tech University. Um, and the state of uh, in Lubbock, we have about 250,000 residents that live in Lubbock. 78% of our students actually come from out of state. Uh, so we always want our students to be aware of that as well. Um, also with that being said, uh, our student to teacher ratio is 20 to one. Um, our average SAT and ACT score, um, SAT score is 1147. We are a tier one research school as well. Again, 78% of our new students come farther than 300 miles away. Um, so it's very exciting at Texas Tech University. At Texas Tech University, we have 10 academic uh, colleges with over 150 different majors, also including Honors College as well. And that's all consisting of undergrad, graduate, pre-law, medical, all under one campus. Uh, we're very excited that we're gonna be opening up the second veterinary school in the state of Texas. Uh, this class is actually gonna start in fall of 2021. And this is actually gonna be in Ar Armarillo, Texas. Um, also, we have over 550 clubs and organizations at Texas Tech with 19 different resident halls, 19 plus dining venues. We do also have a Lazy River. We also have a rec center, which is 242 square feet um, as well. And as I mentioned earlier, lots of spirits and traditions at Tech. We are a division one school. All you literally have to do is swipe your card uh, to get into one of our sporting events at Texas Tech University. Uh, also, we do have a 12 a uh, hundred pound victory bell that always rings for our spirits. Uh, any victories that we may have on campus uh, as well at Tech. Um, also with that being said, there are four requirements to apply to Texas Tech. And these are the four requirements that we're looking at. You can either apply with the Apply Texas or the Common App. We do not prefer one over the other. There is a $75 application fee or a fee waiver. Um, high school transcripts, which um, you can now go ahead and upload your unofficial documents. Uh, so we can make it a decision much sooner, but we will need your official ones um, if you do a plan on attending tech. We also have the SAT and ACT scores if you like to uh, provide those to us as well, if you do choose not to do test optional. We did move test optional for the fall 2021. So again, um, that means you don't need to supply us SAT and ACT scores um, as well. Um, so um, also with that being said, if you are on the top 10% of your school uh, and you're, you will be a part of the assured admissions, the way we actually rank students, um, it's gonna be based off of your SAT and ACT scores and your class ranking at Tech. Um, again, we, if you do not meet any of our assured admissions, or if you're planning on going a holistic review for test optional, we encourage students to definitely put down all your curricular activities um, 
as well. And also we encourage students to go ahead and submit us a letter of recommendation and an essay so we get to know more about you as well. The more we know about you, the more we can definitely uh, make a decision for you too as well. You would definitely upload all of this information through our Ready Raider Connect portal. Um, and you can also register for events by using this portal here as well. Also, with that being said, these are our tuition fees here. Um, we're actually going to be non-resident, but one thing that I would like to point out to all of you is for non-residents, if you do qualify for a $1,000 scholarship, that's where you're going to get the in-state versus the out-of-state tuition. Yes, you just need to qualify for a 1000 competitive scholarship from Texas Tech to get the in-state tuition um, at Texas Tech University. Also, with that being said, uh, again, this is gonna be based off of your SAT and ACT scores, so we have presidential scholarships too as well. So if you qualify for one of these scholarships here, you will definitely get the in-state tuition plus wherever you fall within this bracket here. Down here below, you'll also see the requirements for you to, in order to keep this scholarship as well. Keep in mind, we do have Mater uh, Matador scholarships for our test optional students too. Um, again, we will go ahead and take SAT and ACT scores all the way up until June 1st of your senior year. So that way you have the opportunity to also submit scores to try and get one of our presidential scholarships at Texas Tech University. If you'd like to visit us virtually, feel free to. We have lots of events um, on our campus too and at our visitor center as well. Uh, so please let us know. And thank you so much for joining me and have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much, April. Really appreciate there. Uh, that I'm going to share my screen now, and I'm going to ask all of our panelists here to bring their videos and unmute themselves as I do a couple, a little quick Q&A from me so we can answer a question here and tell a little bit more about your school. So give me just a moment while I get us shared up. Beautiful. So here, I'm just gonna ask and go in the same order that we went, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And Milwaukee School of Engineering, what would you say with that? Um, I would definitely say apply to as many scholarships as you can. It's something I don't think I took enough advantage of for sure. Um, I feel like a lot of people think, oh, there's probably so many people applying to that scholarship, but that's not exactly the case. And just even the littlest bit of money could help knock out a lot of um, obstacles for like your dream school too. Awesome, thank you so much for that. And University of Advanced Tech. Thank you, Jay. I would recommend the students visit the college. Uh, virtually is awesome. Many colleges now have a virtual, uh, visits on a daily basis, virtual open houses, so you can check out the culture of the college. Thank you, Jay. Awesome, yes, of course. Thanks, Lori. And DigiPen, what kind of advice can you offer us? Um, similar to Lori, I would say try to talk to current students at the colleges that you're applying to. I think that's something I didn't do enough when I looked at colleges. I, I went physically there and I did some tours and I thought this school is really pretty. But I think you really want to get a feel for what it's like to be a student there um, and more you really want to be happy with the social life, the student life and the academic life. So don't pick it just on numbers or rankings or all of those things, but really look for a place where you think you're going to be settled and socially happy as well. Gotcha. Yeah, great. Awesome. Thank you so much, Adele. And WPI, Tyler, what you got for us? Yes, yeah, so I'd say uh, for people who are just starting their college search, which I'm sure is probably definitely some people on today's call, you know, good ideas to kind of start thinking about, you know, what size school you want to go to, um, and then what part of the country, which state do you want to be in a rural or an urban area, kind of start there to then narrow it down. Um, it just kind of helps frame things a little bit better rather than looking at a you know, big funnel then narrowing it down from there. Awesome, great. And Derek, what do you got for us? I think do, do more of these. Um, learn about colleges from the comfort of your own home. Speak directly to the representatives or at least get answers directly from the representatives. Uh, there's real people behind those email addresses that, that you can send emails to. So we we can figure out the ins and outs and dig for the right information for you. So make sure you're getting that information and seeking it out. 
Awesome, thank you. And uh, Texas Tech, do you have anything that you would add to this as far as the college search process? I just have to echo what all of my colleagues just mentioned. Definitely go out and visit the campuses because I really feel once you go out and visit the campus, you're gonna look to the right and the left and go, either I love it or I don't. So definitely go out and visit and definitely uh, connect with your admissions counselors because we're here to help you out to answer all of your questions. Beautiful, awesome. So we've got a little bit of time, so I'm gonna throw another question at you here um, because we have about five minutes left. So our next question is, what is your favorite event or tradition that is held on campus or virtually for this year as it was? Um, and we're gonna go in that same order again. So if I could have Milwaukee School of Engineering, jump on in. Um, so I am somewhat of a new admissions counselor at the Milwaukee School of Engineering. But so far with, we have been giving in-person tours since I started, especially with COVID, it's been hard for everyone to get those figured out, but definitely just going around campus with families and just um, being able to explore all of the different opportunities that are available for them has been great too. Gotcha, awesome, fantastic. And uh, University of Advanced Tech? Thank you, Jay. So at the end of every semester, UAT students, uh, the graduating students will showcase their student innovation projects that they've worked two semesters on in teams or individually. Thank very cool. you. Yeah, of course, thank you, very cool. And DigiPen, do you have a favorite event or tradition that's on campus? Um, I also am relatively new. I started right around COVID, so I haven't in person seen a lot of these things, but I have heard that our Halloween um, parade and costume competitions are a very big deal because a lot of our students are gamers and into anime and cosplay and all of that. So people definitely go out around um, Halloween and, and do some really great costumes. Awesome. That's cool. That's fun. WPI, Tyler. Yeah, so WPI has a lot of history and tradition, but um, one of my favorites that's uh, pretty easy to explain is um, on our main quad, we're on the pass intersect. We have a big uh, seal in the ground of the of WPI. You can see in the logo above me. And the rumor is if you step on the seal, you won't graduate in four years. So people avoid it. But the cool part of the tradition is in case you were to accidentally step on the seal, which most students do in their first couple of weeks at WPI, we have our mascot at the other end of the quad. It's a metal statue of a goat where it's Gompy the goat is our mascot. If you rub to him, run to him in 30 seconds and rub his hoof, you reverse the curse. So within the first couple of weeks of school, we see a lot of that in my office is right outside Gompy the goat. So I, I get to see a lot of action at the first couple of weeks of students running there. Gotcha. Awesome there. Okay. And University of Alabama. Um, I think it's a, it's a cop out for me to say something sports related. <laughs> um, but but it is homecoming uh, for us in the fall is probably my favorite event and, and tradition because the whole town comes out. It's not just our sorority mansions and fraternity houses that are decorated up. It's not just the residence halls, but if you walk down the main strip through downtown Tuscaloosa, you'll see every single business just completely decked out in crimson and white and decorated as as much as physically possible to support the university that the town of Tuscaloosa grew up with. Gotcha. Yeah, a lot of spirit there. And finally, Texas Tech, anything to add? What's going on at your school? Yeah, so at Texas Tech, one of my favorite traditions is um, Carol of the Lights. They literally sing 25,000 lights all along at the campus with 20,000 attendees. They literally sing carols and hot chocolate, but most importantly, a lot of our alum come back and they get engaged. So uh, it, back in 2019, there was 19 or nine proposals. So it'll be very interesting to see how many uh, this coming year, hopefully. So Carol of the Lights is a lot of fun to say the least. Awesome, thank you so much. Well, that is going to conclude our evening here. So I just wanna say thank you all so much for joining us. I wanna thank all of our reps for your time here today. Great learning about your schools. Um, just to all of you attendees here, when you close the window, there will be a very quick four question survey. We would love and really appreciate any feedback that you can provide about today's event. Um, also, this is just one of many sessions. So feel free to register for more sessions going on today, going on into the rest of March and April for WACAC. Um, and again, in about one week, you'll be able to find this session's recording. So no worries if you missed anything or wanna reach out to any of these amazing people, you can absolutely do that. And you all have a great night.